The LastPass hack lasted four days. Uber's data breach shows problems with two-factor authentication. Putty is being used to backdoor victims in a huge giveaway that you don't want to miss. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for September 20th, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Hey, do you want early access to the show every single week? Check out my Patreon page to get all sorts of bonus perks. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week, but make sure to stick around for a huge giveaway that I'm doing worth over $1,000. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Back in August, LastPass was hacked, and now the company has disclosed that the attacker had access to internal systems for four days before finally being kicked out. LastPass and cybersecurity firm Mandiant investigated the breach and said customer data and encrypted vaults were not accessed, but the attacker did not drop malicious payloads, but the attacker did gain access to the development environment. In an updated blog post from the 15th of this month, LastPass noted that they had discovered the attacker was able to gain access by impersonating a developer and successfully authenticating via multi-factor authentication. Now this gave the attacker persistent access for those four days. One question that remains unsolved is how the attacker gained initial endpoint compromise, and their blog does state this is still inconclusive. Even though this environment was accessed, it is physically separate and has no direct connection to the LastPass production environment. LastPass explained that the only people who can push a release build to the production environment is the build release team, and even then, any production code goes through a process of code review, testing, and validation. LastPass took two weeks to disclose this breach to customers with their August 25th notification and the email, and they stated that after this four-day period, there is no evidence of any threat actor activity beyond that timeline in their servers. Uber vaguely posted about investigating a cybersecurity incident on Twitter on Thursday of last week, at which time the company took their internal systems for communications and engineering offline. According to reports, the attack happened due to a compromised employee Slack account. This employee was social engineered by the attacker who posed as a corporate IT person, getting them access to the employee's password. From there, the attackers started posting messages throughout the company's Slack, saying Uber experienced a data breach, as well as spreading a lewd photo on an internal information page. 2FA was enabled on this employee's account, but the attacker bypassed it by mass spamming the employee with push alerts and then sending them prompts on WhatsApp as the posed Uber IT department. From there, the attacker found credentials just chilling on a network file share, stole those, and used them to access the corpse EDR console for endpoint detection and response, their production systems, the Slack management console, and a lot more. Of note, the attacker claimed to also have access to the company's HackerOne account and vulnerability disclosures and reports, which are usually kept totally confidential by the company until a patch is actually in place. Uber posted a bulletin on their website about the breach, and at the time they stated this did not involve any access to sensitive user data like trip history, all the apps are operational, and law enforcement was notified. Security experts believe this attack is bigger than the one that happened in 2016, which at the time Uber tried to cover up by paying the hackers $100,000 and not disclosing it, but it did eventually become public knowledge about a year later. This one is worse because the attacker had access to internal systems, as well as their AWS and Google Cloud systems as well. Interestingly, the attacker claimed that they are an 18-year-old who was very straightforward about most of the questions pertaining to the attack, and they went so far as to send screenshots to the New York Times and disclose the company was hacked on the Uber Slack account. This attack shows a flaw in push notifications for multi-factor authentication, aka MFA fatigue. In this case, the attacker sent so many notifications that eventually the employee just got tired of seeing them, and they finally accepted and approved the new device. 
A better option posed by many cybersecurity experts is physical tokens for 2FA like a YubiKey or sending codes to an app that does not continually pop up notifications on a phone. But for what it's worth, if you are experiencing continuous MFA notifications to approve or deny a new device, you may be a target of an attack. Biggest of shout outs to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support. And a huge thank you to my newest patrons, including Voodoo, Chris, and Eddie for joining the Alliance over on patreon.com slash threatwire. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials but let's go ahead and get started on this giveaway. So today on ThreatWire, I am giving away this right here. This is a Wi-Fi Pineapple Enterprise Edition. It is huge and it is heavy. This is the exact one that Darren and I unboxed on the video that was posted on the Hack5 channel yesterday. It's valued at over $1,000. I will try not to drop it. The winner will get hands-on with one of the very first Enterprise Wi-Fi Pineapples that will be shipping. Watch the announcement video to learn all about this beast of a Wi-Fi Pineapple and enter by just doing the following. So first, First, subscribe to the Hack5 YouTube channel just right below this video. Then comment below this video about why you would love to win one of these. How would you use it? What would you use it for? Let me know, I'm curious. I will be picking the winner comment in about one week and I will announce it on the next ThreatWire episode. This is open to anyone with a US shipping address. So for international folks, as long as you have a US address, I can ship this to, then you can enter. This giveaway is sponsored by Hack5 and you have until Monday, September 26th to enter. Good luck. I can't wait to see your comments. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story all about putty. Putty, an open source SSH tool, is being weaponized by threat actors. In a technical paper published by Mandiant, the North Korean hacker group called UNC4034 is using a Trojan version of the Putty SSH client to infect victims with backdoors called AirDry.v2. Specifically, the group is using Putty and Kitty SSH utilities, Kitty is a fork of Putty, to drop these payloads, luring in victims victims with a phishing email offering this really great job at Amazon in which they move the talks over to WhatsApp, then they share an ISO file called amazonassessment.iso. Now this ISO file has a readme text file with a server IP address, a username, and a password, and there's also a download for the malicious putty.exe executable. Now the putty executable looks super legit, but the connect to host functionality deploys malicious shellcode when a successful SSH connection is made. The shellcode drops the airdry.v2 payload to backdoor the victim machine. Once infected, AirDry attempts to make a connection to three different hard-coded addresses and can allow the attacker to obtain system information, configuration info, a stay alive functionality. It can also download and execute a plugin from memory and a lot more. The threat group, UNC4034, is suspected due to their use of specific URLs seen before by North Korean actors. Mandiant believes this is a part of Operation Dream Job, which is a huge campaign that leverages attacks using ISO files and trojanized binaries. Most recently, this op was also quoted as the campaign used for attacks targeting cryptocurrency developers. Mandiant provided technical indicators and detection options in their post. I'm Shannon Morris. That's it for today's ThreatWire. I will see you on the internet.